I, I am a linguist and a researcher. I do, I do a lot of research on my own. And um, in the last 15 years or so, uh, the linguistics as a science has really changed a lot because we've gained access to huge quantities of data. And also, we've gained access to very sophisticated software for analyzing statistical tendencies. And we've really found there's been a sea change in our in in um, theoretical sea change in in our community because we've really found that a lot of things that we thought were very simple questions, where there were just yes and no answers, and it was very very clear line category categorization, we found that a lot of those really are statistical tendencies and that there are many more factors at play and that they are much more complicated. Around the year 2007, I, I went to a conference and I realized that I needed to learn statistics. And I went back to my university and took courses in statistics. And since then, I've even written a textbook for, uh, for uh, linguists who want to use statistics. And I've developed a course here at, uh, the, at UIT for linguists who want to use statistical methods in their research. And um, I realized that one of the hardest things about using or learning to use statistics is figuring out what model fits your data. And um, it really helped me to see examples of what other people had done. Because if I could see an, an example and I could say, oh, this is an example that's similar and somehow to what, to what I've done, then I could then I could say okay I can relate to this because when I was starting I had to take I didn't take my courses in the linguistics uh, department I took my courses in a psychology department and uh, my teachers were psychology professors psychologists have been working with statistics much longer than we have and so they're much further along on this learning curve but another experience that really pushed me in this direction is that I have for many many years been um, the associate editor of our journal Cognitive Linguistics. And um, actually recently I did a survey of all of the articles that have been published in that journal since it was founded in 1990 to the present. Our journal has always been data friendly, if you will. So um, there's never been an issue of our journal that's been published without any uh, statistical analysis of data. However, Around the year 2008, right around the time when I realized I needed to change, <laughs> we, also, we also experienced the first time when we crossed that 50% uh, line. So 50% of the articles coming, well, being published in our journal involve statistics. And we're probably never going back. I don't think we're going to go to 100%, but we're, we're, still, we're, we're now very much dominated by statistical uh, analysis of our data. And, um, and I found also that it's a problem as an editor and as a reviewer, I also review for many other journals, if you don't have access to the data, if you can't see that data. So it's very, very important to um, provide access to that data so that others can see how, how it was done, learn from it. Others can try to replicate it. In that way, we support the scientific method and really the integrity of our field overall. Um, and it's also important just for transparency so that there will not be any fraud. We haven't had any big scandals in linguistics the way that we've seen perhaps in medicine and such. But, you know, it's always possible for people to um, fudge their data a little bit. And that's harder to do if the, if the data is all made open and public and it's all available. So those are some of the reasons why I got started. And um, then I felt like it would really help if we had um, one place, you know, one-stop shopping for linguists to find the data and find the code and learn about it. And we got the idea of launching a website that would uh, house, uh, house those kinds of open data resources. And, um, and we went to our library and went to the people in our library and to our great delight, they thought this was a wonderful project and were willing to spend months and even years <laughs> in meetings with us. And, and they took care of so many of the sort of professional and technical sides of the question that would have been very difficult or really impossible for me to tackle on my own or even with my colleagues just here in linguistics. So this was really very much a partnership 
And we were, we were very, very lucky that we had uh, excellent colleagues in our library to help us out with this project. I sort of, um, when, you, when you do a bunch of uh, theoretical studies and statistical studies, um, after, you, after you've done a study and you've moved on to another study and maybe a, you know, a, a year or two later, you want to go back and you, you, wanna re, re, you want to reuse some of that data or you want to at least take some inspiration from it. Sometimes it's hard to find your own data, <laughs> even your own data, or even understand what, how, how, how it was put together because you know, all of those um, fields that you have in your, in your files, um, if you haven't, uh, act, uh, haven't annotated them well enough, I mean, today, of course, I know exactly what all of those fields mean, but will I know in a month or in a year or in 10 years? But the nice thing about having a resource like Trolling is that it really forces me to, to upload all of my data in a place where I can find it again and I can show other people where to find it. And also, if I've you know, gone through the exercise of actually annotating it in a way that I hope makes it clear even for somebody who doesn't know me and, and has no previous knowledge of my data, then hopefully it will be clear enough also for me <laughs> when I go back to that data and, and look at it again. And it's become much better. And it's also, it's way, way easier. Nowadays also, again, for me, it's easier to go back to trolling and find my own data, find my own code. Then, and I know it's always there and it's safe than to, than to have to dig around in my own files. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I use that also in teaching too, because um, I have a course. What is it? I have a, I have this book, and I also have uh, this. This is one that I I worked on, and this is also this is a textbook that just came out like year year and a, year and a half ago, that I use in my course. And um, but I mean, she has some data sets and and analyses for people to go through on a website that goes with this book. But I have my own data. And there's something different about your own data that you you know it right and so I I give my students my a whole my own data set for each type of statistical analysis they're supposed to learn I give them my own data set and my own code and then when we work through it I can answer you know all of their questions and 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 um, really give them a full experience of what it's like to work with the work with your data and your code. So that's another thing that um, was kind of like a, a myth, I guess, that I had, to, mm, I had to break free of in order to move into this new way of doing linguistics. Because um, it's not like you can just collect data and then shovel it over to some st statistician. Because the statistician, once again, you know, you say the word verb and the, <laughs> and the shutters go down. <laughs> they don't understand anymore what you're, I mean, you have to, you, you really have to, you really have to analyze the data yourself because the statistician will never understand it the way that you do. And also, you have to have some idea of what the models are that you're going to use at, at the end in order to collect the data that will be amenable to that kind of modeling and that kind of analysis. One of my colleagues said when we were making the instructional videos, he said, Laura, you have to make these instructional videos such that even your grandmother could upload that data onto trolling. And I, I think we came, I think we came pretty close to that. <laughs> I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory with the instructional video. And I've always felt that um, research and teaching go hand in hand. I mean, I, um, I've never been involved in a research project that didn't have some sort of a teaching angle to it. Uh, and conversely, whenever I'm teaching, I'm always trying to think about, you know, how, what, what do we still need to learn? I mean, that's one of the great things about teaching is that you, you then, you see, you see the students, you can see those gears turning in those heads, and you can see that they, they see it from a different perspective. They have a, they, they come up, come up against a wall, they come up against a problem, they don't understand what, why something works this way. And then you say, oh, we need a better explanation, or we need to learn more about this phenomenon. So I, I, learn, I learn constantly from the students, and, and that kind of feeds back into the teaching and, and, and the research. And so I think that they just go, <laughs> it's, a, it's a continuous cycle. Hmm. Yeah, they're, they're sort of like getting a s simulated experience of hands-on working with the data. They get the data, they get the code, we go through it, and we all, we all sit there together. They all have their computers open. So, but yeah, it's like a, a hands-on experience of uh, working directly with the data. 
I, I have another thing actually I could say also about dangers if that's interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, because um, there's, uh, there's one thing that has concerned me quite a bit uh, recently is that, mm, I mean, we have a challenge sometimes uh, finding uh, academic research positions for many of our graduates in linguistics. However, there are some corporations that are very interested in hiring um, statistically capable uh, linguistics graduates. Um, and these are mostly big corporations like uh, Google and Amazon and Apple and Facebook and such. Um, and, and I mean, and these are the public ones, right, in the sense that everybody knows that they exist. But they are doing a lot of um, clandestine research on you and me uh, using, using linguistics and using big data. And everything that they do is kept undercover. I mean, that's, the, that's all company secrets. Um, and some of the type of, um, I mean, and it's spyware, let's put it that way. <laughs> I mean, they are, they are spying on us. They're, they're using uh, linguistics and uh, data techniques in order to spy on us. And um, they're not alone. I mean, there are also um, various uh, governmental organizations uh, that, are, that are doing similar things. Um, and spyware operations, and um, this is something that's pretty much unstoppable. I mean, it's just it's going to happen. We can't we can't prevent it. Um, but the more that we put things out there ourselves and make things as public as possible, I think that's that's our only defense, and that we that we that we have all of these things in plain sight and not let it all be shut behind the doors of spying operations and major corporations. So um, and then you asked about the future. So, so my hope is, I, well, I think that uh, um, statistical studies and data studies in linguistics are here to stay. I mean, I think that's, that's definitely a part of our future. I think that uh, in the future, probably all uh, uh, linguistics programs will have courses in statistics for students, and uh, that will be part of the expectations of um, uh, submitting articles to journals. So my hope for the future is that um, that trolling our, our website will continue to be um, a clearinghouse for those materials, a place where people can upload the materials and also um, share with each other and learn from each other. One never, one never knows when one collects data what, you know, what sort of uh, structure in that data might have been overlooked that somebody else could find. And that's one of the really exciting things about this time that we're living in is that suddenly we have access to so much data and a way to look for the structure thanks to the sophisticated statistical software. So, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, no, I think, it's, I think we're living in very exciting times in, in that sense. Yeah, so I can, I can maybe name something really recent. I wonder if I have it here. There's, oh, yeah, here it is. So this is, uh, this is a dissertation that was, um, it was defended in Leiden. Um, I mean, I, I actually had met the author at a couple of conferences before, so I, I, knew, I knew approximately what he was working on, and he knew something about what I was working on. But then I was asked to be um, an opponent, to be, to, to be an examiner on, on, at his dissertation defense. And so, you know, I got a copy, and I was reading through it. And then I realized that he had taken the method that we had used and, and because, and he'd gotten it from trolling, you know, from, our, from our open data site. He'd taken that method and used it on different data and used it in a different way. And it was just, it was so exciting, I practically cried. I mean, it was just a really, really, really exciting moment. So this is, <laughs> come to think of it, th this, this is the stuff from, uh, from uh, th th these are actually just pictures from an article that I wrote together with a colleague of mine about modern Russian. So, and this is the kind of thing that, that, that can happen. And this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for trolling. Because he might have, he might have read my article, 
but then he probably would have said, well, I don't know how to do this, and how am I going to, how am I going to figure it out, and everything. But he just, and, and the thing is, he did this without even having to call me or ask me or anything, you know. He just went to trolling and downloaded it and, and, and saw how it was done and said, oh yeah, I can do the same, and did the same and wrote his dissertation. So, you know, I think, I think what a, a big challenge is to educate people so that they understand that everybody gains, that nobody really loses anything. Uh, and, and that's uh, one of the things that we have also safeguarded in trolling because we have instructions of how to cite the data. And once you put up your data in trolling, then everybody will always know that that was your data because your, your name was on it first and we have the posting dates and, and all of that information. Um, and the only thing, the only, I mean, you can't lose anything. All you can gain really is is more perspectives from more researchers and maybe more interest in your research. So, uh, yeah. One thing about linguistics is I mentioned in psychology they've been doing statistical analyses for a long time and we've come to this rather late. Um, but uh, that means that we're in this kind of formative period where we're really discovering what are the methods that are going to work best for us. And by sharing our data and doing this in a very sort of open public community type fashion, we can really decide what are best practices in our field and really help our whole field move forward by setting standards. And I think that's also uh, really important. Um, yeah.